Question 1. You can drive off the road to pass another vehicle. A. If the vehicle ahead is turning left. B. If there are two or more lanes traveling in your direction. C. Under no circumstances. The correct answer. C. Under no circumstances. It's never acceptable to move your vehicle from the main paved area of the road onto the shoulder in order to overtake or pass another vehicle. Always stay on the designated roadway and avoid using the side area for passing purposes. Question 2. Excessive speed. A. Does not increase the chance of a crash. B. Increases your ability to react to a hazard. C. Often leads to high risk decision making. The correct answer. C. Often leads to high risk decision making. Excessive speed refers to driving a vehicle at a much higher rate than the posted speed limits or the safe speed for the current road and weather conditions. This dangerous behavior is a major cause of many car accidents. Speeding doesn't actually save time and usually results in risky decisions that increase danger on the road. Question 3. This white sign means A. The railroad crossing is controlled. Continue at your regular speed. B. Look, listen and prepare to stop at the crossing if necessary. C. Stop at the railroad tracks and wait for a signal before crossing. The correct answer. B. Look, listen, and prepare to stop at the crossing if necessary. As you approach a railroad crossing, there are essential steps to follow for safety. First, look and listen carefully for any oncoming trains. Then, reduce your speed, slowing down in preparation to potentially stop. If a train is approaching or already at the crossing, Wait for it to pass completely before you continue driving. This cautious approach ensures your safety and prevents any potential collisions with trains at the railroad crossing. Question 4. Using a cell phone while operating a motor vehicle is considered a distraction because A. It causes the driver to be concerned about the cost of the call. B. It occupies the driver's hands, eyes, and mind. C. It is an activity that draws the attention of other drivers. The correct answer. B. It occupies the driver's hands, eyes, and mind. Operating a cell phone while driving is hazardous because it diverts the driver's attention from the road. It takes their eyes, hands, and mental focus away from driving. Even experienced drivers raise their chances of having an accident when using a cell phone while driving. Question 5. Dim your headlights for oncoming vehicles or when you are within 300 feet of a vehicle. A that you are approaching from behind, b. approaching you from behind, c. that you have already passed. The correct answer, a. that you are approaching from behind. When you're driving and there's an approaching vehicle, you should switch your headlights from high beams to low beams when you're within 500 feet of that vehicle. Similarly, if you're following another vehicle, switch to low beams when you're within 300 feet behind it. This helps prevent blinding other drivers and ensures safe visibility on the road. Question 6. Before you change lanes, you should check your mirrors and A. Never look over your right shoulder. B. Always slow down in your traffic lane. C. Glance over your shoulder. The correct answer. C. Glance over your shoulder. Before you switch lanes, it's crucial to thoroughly check the area behind you. Turn your head and look over your shoulder to confirm that you're not impeding any vehicles already in the lane you're moving to. Additionally, Make sure that no other drivers are trying to occupy the same space you're aiming for but from a different lane. Question 7. Alcohol is A. A stimulant B. An antihistamine C. A depressant The correct answer. C. A depressant Alcohol is a type of substance that acts as a depressant. It impairs your ability to think clearly and makes your reflexes less dependable. Question 8. When changing lanes on a freeway, you should A. Signal for at least 5 seconds. B. Slow down before you start to change lanes. C. Assume there is enough space in the next lane for your vehicle, if you signal first. The correct answer. A. Signal for at least 5 seconds. When you're planning to change lanes on a freeway, make sure to activate your turn signal at least 5 seconds before making the lane change. This gives other road users such as drivers, motorcyclists, cyclists, and pedestrians, enough time to understand your intentions. Remember to signal not only when you're turning left or right but also when you're changing lanes, slowing down, or coming to a stop. 
Signaling in these situations is crucial because it informs others about your intended actions on the road, helping to prevent confusion and potential accidents. Question 9. A pentagon-shaped sign is a a stop sign b regulatory sign c school zone or school crossing sign the correct answer c school zone or school crossing sign a five-sided sign which is shaped like a pentagon is employed to notify drivers about the presence of a school zone these signs are used to signal that you're entering an area where a school is located in some cases these pentagonal signs are used to indicate crosswalks within school zones, reminding drivers that children or pedestrians might be crossing the road. These signs serve as a visual reminder to be cautious and watch out for pedestrians, especially in areas where schools are situated, promoting safety for everyone on the road. Question 10. You are driving on the freeway behind a large truck. You should drive. A. Closer behind the truck than you would if following a passenger vehicle. B farther behind the truck than you would if following a passenger vehicle. C. To the right side of the truck and wait to pass. The correct answer. B. Farther behind the truck than you would if following a passenger vehicle. When driving behind a large truck, you should maintain a greater distance compared to following a regular passenger vehicle. This is important because large trucks have bigger blind spots where the driver cannot see other vehicles around them. Keeping a safe distance helps ensure that you're visible to the truck driver and gives you more time to react to any sudden changes in their movement. Question 11. If you are driving on a highway next to a single broken white line marking. A. You cannot cross the line to pass. B. You may only cross the line to change lanes if you are in the left lane. C. You may cross the line to pass and change lanes. The correct answer. C. You may cross the line to pass and change lanes. White lines on the road are used to separate lanes of traffic that are going in the same direction. If the white line is dashed, you're allowed to cross it to either pass another vehicle or change lanes, but only if you can do so safely. This means you should ensure there's no oncoming traffic and that the maneuver won't endanger yourself or others on the road. When the dashed white line is in your lane, you have the flexibility to change lanes or overtake another vehicle if the conditions permit. Question 12. Increase your following distance when driving behind a large vehicle. A. To better see around the sides of the vehicle. B. Because other drivers tend to pull behind large vehicles before trying to pass them. C. Because following too closely will get you caught in the vehicle's slipstream. The correct answer. A. To better see around the sides of the vehicle. When you're driving behind trucks, buses, vans, or vehicles towing campers or trailers, it's important to understand that the drivers of these larger vehicles might not have a clear view of you directly behind them. To enhance safety, you should leave more space between your vehicle and theirs. Furthermore, remember that these larger vehicles can obstruct your view of the road ahead. To counter this, increase your following distance to not only look around the sides of the larger vehicle but also to have a better line of sight to the road ahead. Question 13. Smoking inside a vehicle with a person younger than 18 years of age is a. Legal, if it is your child. B. Illegal at all times. C. Not restricted by law. The correct answer. B. Illegal at all times. In California, it's against the law to smoke in a vehicle whenever there's a child, minor, present inside. This rule applies at all times, aiming to protect the health and well-being of minors by ensuring they're not exposed to harmful second-hand smoke while in a vehicle. Question 14. If you want to pass a bicyclist riding on the right edge of your lane. A. You must honk your horn before passing the bicyclist. B. You must not squeeze past the bicyclist. C. You may not pass the bicyclist for any reason. The correct answer. B. You must not squeeze past the bicyclist. When you're overtaking a bicyclist on the road, it's essential to provide ample space. You should aim to keep a minimum distance of at least 3 feet between your vehicle and the bicycle. Whenever there's enough room to do so, it's crucial to avoid getting too close to the cyclist, as this could be dangerous and might lead to the cyclist losing balance or feeling unsafe. Furthermore, it's important not to force the bicyclist off the road by driving too close to them. Respecting their space and safety is paramount. Question 15. A distraction when driving is A. Anything that causes evasive action while driving. B. Anything that takes your attention away from driving. 
C. Anything that causes you to pay more attention to driving. The correct answer. B. Anything that takes your attention away from driving. A distraction while driving is anything that diverts your focus from the act of driving. These distractions can happen at any moment and in any place. When you're distracted while driving, you're more likely to get into accidents, leading to damage to property, injuries, and even fatalities. Question 16. You must notify the DMV within 5 days if you A. Are cited for a traffic violation. B. Sell or transfer your vehicle. C. Paint your vehicle a different color. The correct answer. B. Sell or transfer your vehicle. According to the law, it's mandatory to inform the Department of Motor Vehicles, DMV, within five consecutive days from the day you sell or transfer the title of a vehicle to a new owner. This notification is crucial for every title transfer to ensure legal compliance and proper record keeping. Question 17. Adjust your rear view and side mirrors. A. Before you start driving. B. Whenever you need to use them. C. Before you get into the car. The correct answer. A. Before you start driving. Prior to driving, taking certain actions greatly impacts your safety, as well as the safety of others on the road. Before you start driving, make sure to follow these steps. Adjust your seat to a comfortable and suitable position for driving. Properly adjust your mirrors so you have clear visibility of your surroundings. Fasten your safety belt securely to ensure you're protected in case of a sudden stop or collision. Ensure that any items inside or on your vehicle are properly secured to prevent them from moving around while you're driving. Question 18. If a child is riding a bicycle near your vehicle. A. Beep your horn. B. Expect the child to be in total control of the bicycle. C. Expect the unexpected. The correct answer. C. Expect the unexpected. Children riding bicycles can behave in unpredictable ways. This is particularly true for younger cyclists, as they might suddenly change their direction without warning. It's important to keep in mind that both children and bicycles are relatively small in size, which can make them harder to spot in traffic. As a driver, being aware of this unpredictability and reduced visibility is crucial. Always exercise extra caution when sharing the road with children on bicycles, as their actions might not conform to typical traffic patterns. Stay attentive, drive at a safe speed, and be prepared to react to any sudden movements from young bicyclists. Question 19. It is illegal to leave a child age, underscore or younger alone in a vehicle. A. 8. B. 7. C. 6. The correct answer. C. 6. It's always unsafe to leave a child alone in a car. Specifically, it's against the law to leave a child who is 6 years old or younger unattended in a vehicle. However, it's permissible to leave a child in a car if they are under the care of someone aged 12 or older. This rule is in place to prioritize the safety and well-being of children, as leaving them alone in a vehicle can pose serious risks such as overheating, injury, or abduction. It's important to ensure that children are always under appropriate supervision to prevent any potential harm. Question 20. Night driving presents unique problems because A. The speed limit is increased at night. B. There are fewer cars on the roads at night. C. Distance and vehicle speed are difficult to judge in the dark. The correct answer. C. Distance and vehicle speed are difficult to judge in the dark. Driving at night presents specific challenges for drivers. The reduced visibility during nighttime makes it harder to accurately assess distances and the speeds of other vehicles on the road. This is because drivers' vision is limited to the area illuminated by their headlights, which means they can only see as far as the light reaches. This reduced visibility at night can make it more challenging to gauge how far away other vehicles are and how fast they're moving, leading to potential difficulties in making safe driving decisions. Question 21. If you miss your exit on the freeway, you should not. A. Continue on the freeway and find an alternate route to your destination. B. Proceed to the next exit, leave the freeway, and return to your proper exit. C. Back up on the road or shoulder. The correct answer. C. Back up on the road or shoulder. If you happen to miss your intended turn or exit while driving, avoid reversing your vehicle on the road or shoulder. Instead, continue driving until you reach the next available exit or intersection. 
Reversing on the road or shoulder can be dangerous because other drivers aren't anticipating a vehicle moving backward in their direction. This unexpected action could lead to a collision and is best avoided. It's safer to proceed to the next suitable location to turn around or find an alternative route. Question 22. Which of the following driving skills is slash are affected by the use of alcohol and or drugs? A. Alertness. B. Coordination. C. Both of the above. The correct answer. C. Both of the above. Alcohol and drugs can significantly impair several crucial skills required for safe driving. These substances can notably impact a driver's ability to react quickly, coordinate their movements, stay alert, and maintain proper concentration on the road. As a result, drivers under the influence of alcohol or drugs might struggle to respond promptly to unexpected situations, have difficulty controlling their vehicle's movements, feel drowsy or less attentive, and find it hard to focus on driving tasks. These impairments drastically increase the risk of accidents and make driving while under the influence extremely dangerous. Question 23. What is an important step in turning? A. Check traffic in all directions. B. Increase your speed. C. Always move to the left lane. The correct answer. A. Check traffic in all directions. Before making a turn, it's important to check behind you and also look to both sides of your vehicle to make sure it's safe to proceed. This helps you confirm that there are no approaching vehicles, pedestrians, or obstacles that might interfere with your turn. Additionally, adjust your speed while making the turn to ensure that you do so safely, considering factors such as the road conditions, the sharpness of the turn, and the flow of traffic. This careful approach helps prevent accidents and promotes smooth, safe maneuvering. Question 24. A pedestrian starts to cross the street after the don't walk signal begins to flash. The pedestrian is in the middle of the street when your signal light changes to green. You should. A. Proceed if you have the right of way. B. Proceed if the pedestrian is not in your lane. C. Wait until the pedestrian crosses the street before proceeding. The correct answer. C. Wait until the pedestrian crosses the street before proceeding. When you encounter a green traffic light, you should yield the right of way to any vehicle, cyclist, or pedestrian that is already in the intersection. You should let them finish crossing before you proceed. Furthermore, if you're at a point where the traffic signal light starts flashing and a pedestrian starts crossing the street, you should wait until they have completely crossed before you continue driving. This ensures their safety and avoids any potential collisions while they're still in the crosswalk. Question 25. Always carefully look for motorcycles before you change lanes because A. Their small size can make them hard to see. B. They usually have the right of way at intersections. C. It is illegal for motorcycles to share traffic lanes. The correct answer. A. Their small size can make them hard to see. When you're planning to change lanes, it's crucial to be thorough in checking for motorcycles. Due to their smaller size, motorcycles can easily go unnoticed in your blind spots, which are areas around your vehicle that your mirrors might not cover. Taking the time to actively look for motorcycles helps ensure you don't miss them when making lane changes. This precaution is vital to prevent accidents and ensure the safety of both motorcyclists and other road users. Question 26. The safest precaution that you can take when using cellular phones while driving is A. To use hands-free devices so you can keep both hands on the steering wheel. B. To keep your phone within easy reach so you won't need to take your eyes off the road. C. To review the number before answering a call. The correct answer. A to use hands-free devices so you can keep both hands on the steering wheel. If you're under 18 years old, using a cell phone while driving is generally not allowed, except for specific emergencies. However, drivers who are 18 or older can use a cell phone, but they must use a hands-free device to do so. This means that for minors, cell phones are restricted while driving, except for emergencies, while adult drivers can use cell phones but only in a hands-free manner. Question 27. It is very foggy. You should slow down and A. Turn on your emergency flashers. B. Turn your lights to their high beam setting. C. Turn your lights to their low beam setting. The correct answer. C. Turn your lights to their low beam setting. When you're driving in conditions like fog, snow, rain, or mist, it's important to use your low beam headlights. 
High beam lights can create glare by reflecting off the precipitation particles, which makes it even harder to see. If your vehicle is equipped with fog lights, you can use them along with your low beam headlights. Fog lights are designed to be less glaring and help improve visibility in challenging weather conditions. Using these lights appropriately enhances your ability to see the road clearly and ensures other drivers can see your vehicle as well. Question 28. If oncoming headlights are blinding you while you are driving at night, you should A. Look toward the right edge of the road. B. Switch your lights to high beams. C. Turn your lights on and off. The correct answer. A. Look toward the right edge of the road. When you're driving and the headlights of an approaching vehicle are too bright and blinding, you can avoid their glare by briefly shifting your gaze toward the right edge of the road. By doing this, you can maintain your orientation on the road while also preventing the intense light from affecting your vision. This technique helps you stay safely on the road until the bright headlights pass by, making your driving experience more comfortable and reducing the risk of being temporarily blinded by the oncoming vehicle's lights. Question 29. You are approaching an intersection where a traffic signal is displaying a steady yellow light. If you have not already entered the intersection, you should A. Speed up to beat the red light. B. Reduce your speed and proceed carefully through the intersection. C. Come to a safe stop. The correct answer. C. Come to a safe stop. When you approach an intersection and encounter a steady yellow light, you should start slowing down your vehicle and come to a safe stop before the stop line or crosswalk if it's possible to do so safely. However, if you've already entered the intersection when the light turns yellow, you should continue driving through the intersection at a speed that allows you to safely clear it. In this situation, it's important to avoid sudden stops that could lead to re-rent collisions or endanger other drivers. Question 30. A broken yellow line between two lanes of traffic means A. Both lanes of traffic are going in the same direction. B. Passing is permitted when it's safe. C. Passing is not permitted. The correct answer. B. Passing is permitted when it's safe. Dashed yellow lines on the road are used to divide individual lanes of traffic that are going in opposite directions. These lines indicate that you're allowed to pass another vehicle, but only when there's no oncoming traffic in the lane you want to use for passing. In other words, you can move into the passing lane and overtake a slower vehicle if the road ahead is clear of vehicles coming towards you. This maneuver should be done with caution, ensuring that it's safe to pass and that you have enough visibility to complete the maneuver without causing any hazards. Question 31. You are driving on the freeway. The vehicle in front of you is a large truck. You should drive. A. Closely behind the truck in bad weather because the driver can see farther ahead than you can. B farther behind the truck than you would when following a passenger vehicle. C. No more than one car length behind the truck so the driver can see you. The correct answer. B. Farther behind the truck than you would when following a passenger vehicle. If you drive very close behind a truck, close enough that you can't see the truck driver's side view mirrors, the truck driver also can't see you. This lack of visibility means the truck driver won't be aware of your presence. Tailgating a truck or any vehicle is risky because it eliminates the safe space you need to react if the vehicle in front of you suddenly stops. Keeping a safe following distance is crucial because it gives you time to respond to unexpected situations and prevents accidents. Question 32. After passing a vehicle, it is safe to return to your driving lane when A. The driver you pass signals for you to return to your lane. B. You signal your intention for 3 seconds. C. You see the headlights of the past vehicle in your rearview mirror. The correct answer. C. You see the headlights of the past vehicle in your rearview mirror. After passing another vehicle, it's important to make sure you have enough space before you move back into your original lane. To do this, you can use your inside rearview mirror. If you can see both headlights of the vehicle you just passed in your rearview mirror, it's an indicator that you've created a safe distance and have enough room to safely return to your driving lane. This precaution ensures that you avoid cutting off the vehicle you just passed, which could lead to a dangerous situation. Question 33. When parking next to a curb, you should use your turn signals. A. Only when pulling away from the curb. B. When pulling next to, but not away from, the curb. C. When pulling next to or away from the curb. The correct answer. C. When pulling next to or away from the curb. 
it's important for drivers to use their turn signals when they are either moving closer to the side of the road, towards a curb, or moving away from the side of the road, away from a curb. Signaling in these situations lets other drivers and pedestrians know your intentions and helps ensure safe and predictable movements on the road. Whether you're parking, pulling over, or merging back into traffic, using your turn signals helps communicate your actions to those around you. Question 34. A blood alcohol concentration of 0.02%. A. Won't have any effect on your driving. B. Won't put other drivers at risk. C. Will double your chances of having an accident. The correct answer. C. Will double your chances of having an accident. For every increase of 0.02% in a driver's blood alcohol concentration, BAC, the risk of being involved in a fatal crash nearly doubles. In simpler terms, even a small rise in BAC significantly raises the likelihood of a severe accident resulting in loss of life. This emphasizes the extreme danger of driving under the influence of alcohol and underscores the importance of staying sober while operating a vehicle. Question 35. You have stopped for a train at a railroad crossing. After the train passes, you should A. Wait for signal lights to stop flashing. B. Look for a second train. C. Both of the above. The correct answer. C. Both of the above. Even if you see a train finish crossing, it's essential to remain cautious because another train could be coming on a different track. Wait until you're sure that no more trains are approaching from any direction before proceeding. Make sure that all the crossing gates are fully raised and that all the flashing warning signals have stopped. Only when it's clear and safe, and all the signals have stopped, should you continue driving across the railroad tracks. This extra care ensures your safety and prevents any potential collisions with a second train. Question 36. When you want to change lanes, you should never A. Move into another lane while within an intersection. B. Check your blind spot by looking over your shoulder. C. Check for other drivers moving into the same lane. The correct answer. A. Move into another lane while within an intersection. It's crucial to avoid changing lanes while you're inside an intersection. When you're planning to switch lanes, remember to turn your head and look over your shoulder to check for vehicles in your blind spot. This ensures you're aware of any cars that might not be visible in your mirrors. Additionally, stay attentive to the movements of other drivers who might be entering the same lane. This careful approach helps prevent accidents and promotes safer lane changes.